Welcome, 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 fellas, to the Captain Saver Bro Show, episode 48, the relationship checklist for you. Yeah, that's right. This is about you, not the relationship checklist for them because I already did an episode. I don't remember which episode. It was a few months back, but you need to go check that out. But this is the relationship check uh, checklist for you, the things that you need before you get into a relationship. First, guys, this episode is brought to you by the Players Club at um, the Players Club VIP. That's my private exclusive men's community where you can get tons and tons of value, tons and tons of game. It's a, a, a community of like minded men like myself, like yourself. We have a community, a tribe of men where we share ideas, chop up game with each other, help each other out in life and dating and stuff like that. Um, so if you're looking for a tribe, you're looking for a network of men. Come join the Players Club at theplayersclub.vip. Just that alone is worth the price. It's only 25 bucks a month, but that's not all you get. When you join the Players Club, you get uh, bi-weekly, uh, bi-weekly coaching sessions, um, bi-weekly meetings where we meet bi-weekly. Yeah, bi-weekly, uh, twice a month. We meet twice a month. We chop up game. If you guys have any questions about dating game, relationship, life, whatever, you want me to go over your text threads, your phone calls, your dating app profiles, whatever you need in, in regards to the game, dating, relationships, or life, you come meet with me, and I'll sort you out, give you the solutions. I, sometimes I got my player partners with me helping me out. So we do that twice a month. Also, you get direct access, direct access to me. You can message me whenever you want, um, privately or you know in a group setting. You can get in touch with me. Any question that you may have, anything that you need, any answer that you you know you have a question, any answer that you need to a question, solution to a problem, I got you. You can reach me directly. Not only that, you get fifty percent discounts on one on one coaching with me. So one on one, you. You want a, pr- a private coaching session with session with me? You get a fifty percent discount. So that alone too, it's, it's worth the price of twenty five dollars a month. Not only that, you get um, discounts on all of the courses and all of the events that we do. When I do the Ultimate Ladies Man or Seduction Mastery, you get discounts on attending those events. So and you get discounts on any courses that I release. So. It's, it's worth its weight in gold, man. So you join that by going to the playersclub.vip or clicking the link in the description, the bio, uh, the comments, wherever you see, may, may see this at. Also, guys, make sure you follow me on all social media platforms, all social media platforms. That's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, Facebook. I'm everywhere posting daily, daily game. So follow me all social media platforms at King Dreism, K-I-N-G-D-R-E-I-S-M. Now, if you're listening over on Spotify or Apple uh, Podcasts and you want to watch me on YouTube, go to King Dre uh, on YouTube, type in King Dre or King Dreism, or type in the Captain Saver Bro Show. Now, if you're watching the video format on YouTube and you want to listen to me while you're driving your trucks or doing your workouts, you want to listen to the audio format, go to... um, Spotify or Apple Podcasts and type in the Captain Saver Bro Show or King Dre and I'll pop right up. But anyway, guys, oh, one more thing. Tonight, if you're hearing this right now, like if you're hearing this early enough, I'm having a class tonight. Um, I'm having a class tonight, The Three Secrets to Make a Woman Fall in Love with You. It's free. It's absolutely free. I'm going to be giving you game that when you can, you can implement this game and it's going to transform your dating life or your relationship, uh, your relationship life. You're going to get instant results if you apply what I'm teaching you for free. So sign up how to make a woman fall in love with you.com or click the link in the bio, the description, uh, the comments, wherever you see that link, three secrets to make a woman fall in love with you. Click that and you can register now. If you're listening and it's early in the day, Go sign up right now because as of tonight when this come out, as of tonight, if you're hearing this, if you're hearing this anytime after Friday at 8 p.m., it's going to be too late. So anyway, guys, um, that's not that's been that <laughs> uh, we can't end the episode that early. We tripping, right? Y'all ain't even got the game yet, but we're going to get straight into the game. We're going to get straight into what you guys came to see. All right, guys, let's get this game flowing. Let's get this game flowing. Let's get this game flowing. Now, um, you know, there's a lot on these Manosphere streets, these YouTube streets, and on the internet in general, teaching guys, you know, you need to have these things in order before you get into the relationship. And the general consensus is you need to have um, a certain amount of money, a certain body count, and um, 
I forgot the other one they say, but it, what I'm saying is that you need way more than that before you, you know, get into a, a, a serious relationship. And it's not just that black and white. And a lot of it is not physical stuff. Yeah, you need your bread and you need a little bit of game, but it get, it get a little bit deeper than that. If you want to have a successful relationship, if you want your relationship to have the highest odds of succeeding and lasting long term. You need more than just money and being able to sleep with a, 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 a bunch of women. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that down for you a little bit more and give you the, 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 the intrinsic things that you need, the things that's internal, the things that, you know, that you can develop within yourself so that, you know, you stay attractive to your, your woman. You stay that guy to your woman. Your woman is not bored. You know, and you can be happy in your situation and your woman can be happy, too. And she can look up to you and respect you like the king that you have the potential to be or that you are. You understand what I'm saying? So now. The first thing that you need and this I need you guys to write this down. This ain't no this one ain't no. Oh, maybe it may work. Maybe it may not work for me. Maybe this ain't for me. This for everybody. So everybody write this down. Everybody take notes. I don't give a fuck what level of the game you on. I don't give a damn where you at in the game. I don't give a damn what's your skill level. This is for you. You understand? Because everybody need this. So number one is a solid foundation. A solid inner foundation. That's your core. That's who you are on the inside, right? And that consists of your confidence, right? This is what we're going we're gonna to break down the solid inner foundation. And, and the, the, the first thing that makes up a solid inner foundation is your confidence, right? Your confidence is how you feel about yourself, the way that you feel about yourself, the, 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 the belief in oneself. And you have to have that. You have to believe in yourself. You also have to trust in yourself. If you don't think you that dude, then she ain't going to think you that dude either. And confidence is the main attractor in any situation whether it's a business relationship or a romantic relationship if you don't have confidence you're gonna be fooled and nobody gonna like you because you don't even like yourself it's essential in a relationship that you have confidence if you don't have confidence in yourself if you don't have confidence in your abilities if you don't trust in your abilities if you don't trust in yourself if you don't love yourself if you don't value yourself you are going to suffer in relationships and your relationships are not going to last unless you pay and you ain't going to do nothing but be getting drained and, 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 and twirled the whole time. So, you know, that's if a woman even take you serious. You see what I'm saying? Confidence is a must. If you don't love you, she can't, ain't going to love you. You see what I'm saying? You have to have confidence. How you want a woman to follow you? How do you want a, a, a woman to follow your lead? And, and take your orders and obey you and submit to you and all this when you don't even, you're not even sure of yourself. You see what I'm saying? That spells danger for anybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't work for no company or follow no boss. I wouldn't follow nobody nowhere who wasn't sure of themselves, you know, and that's just me as a man. You see what I'm saying? And, and me as a man, I can, if, if, if anything, if something go wrong, I can, I can, I can hold my own, but that's see me as a man. Just imagine a woman who, who, you know, who's more softer than you, who may not be equipped with the strength that you have or whatever the case may be. She follow you. That spells danger. If you if, if she following you in life and, and, and you don't you don't got confidence in where you're going, you don't got confidence in you and you don't got confidence in your ability. She going to be screwed and the kids going to be screwed, too. So, you know, confidence is big, man. This is why women love confidence so much. This is why you see guys who are, quote unquote, short who you guys say, oh, short guys don't get no play. Short guys got confidence. This is why you see short guys getting played. This is why you see fat guys getting played. This is why you see ugly guys and broke guys getting played because they got confidence and they got a little bit of game. You understand what I'm saying? Confidence is king. That's probably the most important trait that you can have as a human being and as a man. You cannot sleep on confidence. You need that shit. Now, the second piece that makes up a solid inner foundation it's emotional control. You must be able to control your emotions. Women cannot feel safe and they not, cannot feel secure if you are just as emotionally unstable as her. So if you get mad and you flying off the handle and screaming and hollering and punching walls and shit, can't no woman be safe with you. And if a woman can't be safe for you, this is where the masculine version of herself comes out because she got to survive. You're not, not, like a life or death situation, but she has to, 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 to be able to thrive in a situation 
to where it's unstable and it's unsafe. And this is where the, 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 the combativeness comes. This is where even in women that's feminine, you know, even in women that's fe- feminine, our bodies give us the tool to survive the situations that we're in as sane as possible so we can be as healthy as possible. And a lot of the times when you're in rougher competitive situations or not competitive like work, but when you're in rougher situations or situations where, you know, it's more anxiety producing, it's more uh, uh, fear producing, it's more uncertainty. You have to be able to survive in that and you have to be able to thrive in that. And your body is going to give you the tools it needs to survive in that. And this is where you see women become more combatty, more bitchy, more or more more dominant you see what i'm saying because they have to do what they need to do to survive and if you create in a space in in, in a situation or relationship to where you don't have emotional control you don't have control over your emotions your woman is not going to be feel safe with you your woman is not going to feel secure with you and that means she's not going to be able to be submissive to you feminine is one thing now we we don't like to we don't want to give women an out to, to to be masculine Right. I believe women should do their best to remain feminine under under all circumstances. Right. Feminine is one thing, but submissiveness, you're not going to get submissiveness. Right. A lot of guys in the space tend to conflate feminine and submissive. They're not the same thing. You want feminine and submissive. Right. But you're not going to have a woman who's submissive to you and subservient to you and whatever you call it. You're not going to have that if she don't feel safe. You see what I'm saying? And a big part of a woman feeling safe is your ability to control your emotions. That's the, the, the excitement. And again, control meaning control, not letting your emotions dictate your actions, not, not letting your emotions dictate what come off of your mouth, not, not letting other people's actions dictate, you know, your actions. You see what I'm saying? So you get mad, you flying off the handle, you calling all type of pigs and fat bitches and, you know, punching the wall and driving erratic and drinking yourself to sleep and doing all type of drugs because you can't control yourself because you upset. A woman ain't going to be able to feel safe like that. Also, the, the good, the positive emotions, too. You get super happy and you fucking start buying up the whole motherfucking mall because you got a big check because you're excited. You see what I'm saying? Women can't feel safe with things like that. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to be a zombie. It, it, life is about having emotions and, emotions and experiencing emotions, but you need to learn how to control those emotions and not let your uh, emotions dictate the way that you make your moves. Feel your emotions. Enjoy your emotions. You know, stewing your emotions. Um, you know, learn to process them. All of that. But you cannot let your emotions dictate your actions especially the bad emotions like uh, anger and sadness. And, you know, you cannot let that take over you because if emotions run your relationship, you as a man, you're just going to run it into the ground and your woman going to look at you just like she look at herself, emotionally unstable. Most women, <clears throat> most women are so emotionally unstable. Um, it's almost like, you know, single <laughs> women who be single, Right. Women who be single and they don't have the, the, the emotional control and, and the emotional fortitude of a good man, a good solid man. Women typically they be either have to do uh, uh, be on antidepressants or anxiety medication or fucking smoke weed or wine or something because their emotions be all over the place. And you don't want to be that type of guy. You don't want to be that guy. So on your journey to self mastery, emotional control needs to be a high priority controlling your goddamn emotions again i'm not saying suppress your emotions or drink your emotions away or do drugs until you can't feel because then that's not bad because your emotions ain't going nowhere they're just sitting in your and stewing and that's gonna make you toxic <clears throat> you know when you're suppressing your emotions that makes you toxic what i'm saying is control learn how to control your emotions if a woman can't feel the safety and security uh, you know, of you, then you're not going to get the best version of that woman. And you won't always want to make sure you get in the best version of your woman. If you're in a situation to where your woman is feeling unsafe and unsecure emotionally, you're going to get a more bitchy woman. You're going to get a more combative woman. You're going to get a woman who, um, you know, who's more dominant, who's more, uh, you know, aggressive. You see now, let me do a sidebar. <clears throat> There are some women 
to where I don't care how good you can control your emotions, they are emotional wreck. Women like that, make sure you stay away from because women like that are going to drain you. You understand? Some women are just an emotional wreck. Some women need therapy. You understand? So just because you're controlling your emotions, that don't mean all women just going to feel safe and be on board. A lot of women have been through traumatic experiences. Their mother treated them like shit. Their daddy wasn't around. Their daddy treated them like shit. The first boyfriend treated them like shit. They got, you know, essayed or graped or whatever, whatever the case may be. That got nothing to do with you. What I'm saying is, you know, you may be a guy who 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 who's solid and can control his emotions, but, you know, some women just, you know, they still gonna be an emotional wreck, basically. But if 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 typically if you have a woman who's healthy and she get with you and she fucking with you, your ability to con- control her to control your emotions, you being an emotional rock, you being an emotional fortitude will rub off on her. You see what I'm saying? And it'll make her feel a lot safer and secure in her own. So that's a big piece. That's a that's a, that's a, a hell of a key. Now, the next piece of so, a solid inner foundation is emotional intelligence. And this is something that I've, you know, in my 30s, see, I didn't I didn't have emotional intelligence when I was in my 20s. You see what I'm saying? Because I suppress my emotions. I, I always suppress my emotions and the only Emotion that people saw out of me was anger and excitement. I didn't even know how to identify the other emotions. But but emotional uh, intelligence is just your ability to to identify um, identify and communicate emotions effectively. That's what emotional intelligence is. And as a man, you need to be able to do that. The easiest, the best way to do that is to go sober for a little bit. So if you're a guy who smokes cigarettes or smoke weed or you drink, do away with it for for about a year. You see what I'm saying? And because we we a lot of us tend to get on substances when we're young. Teenagers, we start smoking, we start drinking and shit and and we go through life we go through life not learning how to manage our emotions and 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 learning emotional intelligence because we don't typically don't have them we don't know how to express ourselves emotionally the only thing we can express is anger and shit so <clears throat> the best way to 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 because emotional intelligence is 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 huge right and, and that'll make you a a, a a hell of a a lot better leader you'll be a, a much better leader but a much better man but what i'm saying is the to eat the, the one of the best ways to do that is to get sober and go through the process of starting to learn your emotions again. When I stopped smoking and drinking, but almost five years ago at this point, I was able to feel things that I never felt before, right? Or if I did feel it, I was always suppressing it. Like I said, we we tend to, when we're young, we tend to supp- start suppressing our emotions. And then when we get teenagers, we tend to smoke and drink and all this old other shit. So we don't know what to do with them. And now when we get into a situation or we get into a relationship, we don't know how to communicate certain emotions of effectively and we default everything to anger instead of identifying, you know, different emotions and being able to express and communicate them. So I would employ everybody who drink or smoke to get sober for a little bit. That way you can learn how to, you know, identify your emotions, process them and communicate them effectively. When you able to do that, man, that's going to take your game to a whole nother level. It's very important that you learn how to communicate your emotions effectively, not just anger, not just excitement, but when you feel jealousy, when you feel hurt, when you feel uh, betrayed, when you feel let down, when you feel uh, uh, passionate, when you feel uh, horny, when you feel excited, when you feel depressed, when you feel fear, when you feel anxiousness, when you feel uh, uh, anticipation, all of these different emotions is good that you know how to identify and communicate them effectively to your woman. You understand what I'm saying? And when you're able to do that, now you got a lot of mature, immature women who won't be able to handle that. But fuck, we ain't talking about them. We talking about good, solid, wholesome women. They'll be, they'll appreciate you being able to say, hey, listen, um, you know, hey, listen, when you do this, it makes me feel like this, right? It makes me feel like this, and this is how I feel. And I don't like feeling like that. So we got to stop doing that. You see what I'm saying? 
that's when you're healthy and you have emotional intelligence. But a lot of times you don't have that. When you a woman do something, you just fly off the handle and you just screaming and hollering and, you know, or you shut down, give them the silent treatment and they don't know what the fuck going on. And all they see is anger or silence. You see, and they start to get frustrated and, you know, downhill it goes. So always learn. Remember, on the, on, on the path to, to self-mastery and becoming a better person and becoming the best version of yourself, emotional control and, and emotional intelligence should take priority. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so now the next piece in a solid inner foundation is mental stability, right? If you guy who's depressed all the time, take care of your depression. I'm not no therapist, so I'm not going to sit up here and give you no therapy lecture. But you got to do what you got to do to get your motherfucking mind right. Because if your mind ain't right, ain't nothing going to be right. You see what I'm saying? If you're depressed and you're down and you on, you know, hooked on drugs all the time, a woman ain't going to really respect you. And the only women that's going to typically come around and stay around are women who are bottom feeders and energy vampires to drain you. So you want to make sure you have that in check before you start seeking a relationship. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Again, if we all go through things in this society that, you know, take a toll on our mental health and, you know, we all feel moods and this and that. We all get anxious. We all get scared. We all get, you know, feel don't don't feel like getting up today, you know, feel a little depressed here and there. But the, the key is to, to, to learning how to push past those, you know, those mental states so you can do what you need to do. You see what I'm saying? Learning how to identify with it and learning and saying, OK, I feel like this today. It's cool. It that it is what it is. That's a part of life, and getting past it. You have to learn how to be able to. And, and I'm not saying that I'm again. I'm just the most uh, tip top mental guy. I'm not to say that because you know that mental health shit is a beast. You know, and the mind is very powerful. Sometimes you can lose control of yourself. But what I'm saying is, you need to be doing everything in your power to make sure your mental health is top tier. And when it comes to relationships and dating. Uh, dealing with shitty women and dealing with women who who don't respect you, dealing with women who taking advantage of you, dealing with women who flaking on you and ghosting you and treating you bad, that has a huge effect on your mental health. You understand? When we, I, I have this theory, and I believe I believe this wholeheartedly. I believe God told me this. I believe this is how God wanted it to be. When when we are not successful with the opposite sex, it tends to take a toll on our mental health. This is the penalty for not being able to reproduce. So, um, because you have to reproduce to sustain, to sustain life. This is why sex feels so good. This is why sex, having sex and orgasms release the most positive feelings in ourselves. That's the reward for reproducing. The, the, the thing that feels best, the things that feel the best give you the most reward. Like, um, you know, having sex and orgasms and eating these things feel the best. So this is why people do it so much. So what I'm saying is when you can't do that, it's going to affect you negatively, your mental health. So what I'm saying is identify the things in your life that's keeping you down mentally and you either attack those things or get rid of them. You see what I'm saying? Because you want to make sure you tip top. At all times, because in the relationship, you're going to be looked at as the leader. You're going to be looked at as the king and you have to carry yourself as such. You understand what I'm saying? But that's the first thing that you need in a relationship to, you know, for that's the first thing that you should have in a relationship or that's the first thing on the list on a relationship checklist. And that's a solid inner foundation. (laughs) You got to have a solid inner foundation. The next thing you need. Number two, so we got solid inner foundation. And number two is communication skills. This is your ability to to communicate your wants, your needs, your desires, right? It's also your ability to listen and hear your woman's grievances, needs, and desires. And you got to be able to communicate your grievances too, right? Communication is the connector. Nothing happens without communication. Nothing happens without communication, you're not getting laid. You're not getting no girlfriend. You're not getting no dinner plate. You're not getting no submission. You're not getting no sex. You're not getting no back rub. You're not get telling her to go up and get the remote and bring it to you. Nothing is happening without communication. And you have to learn how to communicate 
effectively as a man. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm very good at communicating as a man. Um, that's one of my strong suits is communication. Um, now, I ain't the best at, you know, sitting through bullshit. If I think something is bullshit, I'm not the best at that. But as far as, you know, speaking, articulating my thoughts and articulating my feelings, which is emotional intelligence, as far as that, I'm a beast with that. You see what I'm saying? And I get respected for that. But you need that because that is the, 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 the connector that gets you communication, gets you from point A to point Z and whatever you want. And not only verbal communication, but nonverbal communication and nonverbal communication. See, verbal communication is saying, hey, listen, I don't like the way that you're doing. Uh, I don't like the way that you're doing that. That makes me feel like this. Or, hey, I'm proud of you. You know, let's put your shoes on. Let's go fucking out for a night on the towel so we can celebrate. Or, 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 or hey, listen. I love the way you looking in that dress. That's verbal communication. Nonverbal communication is a woman violates you and you don't answer the phone for her until she apologize. You see what I'm saying? Or your woman, you know, your woman walking by and she looking good and you, you know, you grab up, you know, grab her by the neck, kiss on the cheek, you know, grab about it, you know, do the Trump thing and grab about the, the, the P-U-S-S-Y, right? <laughs> or, or smack her on the ass and tell her how good she looking and you can't wait to get to her. You see what I'm saying? That's nonverbal communication. You see, you got to be good at both. You got to be good at verbal communication and non-verbal communication. And a lot of your nonverbal communication going to come out when a motherfucker trying you and you got to enforce your shit. You see what I'm saying? She call you out your name. <laughs> she call you out your name on the phone and you hang up and you don't respond to her shit to, until she say, I apologize. Or you got to put her on ice. You see what I'm saying? Or, you know, she doing good, right? She doing good. She treating you good. So you surprise her with some flowers and a night on the town without saying nothing. You know, you talk when you interacting on a date or whatever, but, you know, work on your nonverbal communication skills too, because they equally as important. And a lot of times, a lot of times women hear nonverbal communication better than they hear verbal communication. Now you got some, it just depends on the woman. Some women are, are, are ear, all ears, so your verbal communication going to mean more than <clears throat> your nonverbal communication, right? But some women, your words ain't going to mean a motherfucking thing and everything going to be all, you know, nonverbal with them. Not that you can't, you're not going to talk to them and vibe and shit like that, but the things that stick are going to be the nonverbal. So you just got to, part of the game is, is, is knowing what type of woman that you have and, and, and dealing with her accordingly. You see what I'm saying? Some women, some women uh, uh, respond better to nonverbal communication and some women respond better to verbal communication. So, but again, your communication skills got to be on point before you get into a relationship. Now, if, if you want to get a little bit deeper with that, see, this is, this is, this is basically like, this is like beginner to in, in, uh, intermediate level shit. Now, you know, I get way deeper when, when, you know, when I do seduction mastery summits and or seduction mastery course and all that which is not available, you should have got it. If you didn't get it, you missed out. I may drop it again, you know, at the end of the year or something like that. But, you know, I get a lot deeper with, with, with uh, how can I say this, itemizing or, or, you know, breaking down, you know, what different, different types of women want to hear and the different types of things that they respond to. So I can get, you know, you can get real deep as far as communication go. But t t t the point is, the basis is you need to be able to communicate verbally effectively and you need to be able to communicate non-verbally effectively. Now, again, when you get a little bit deeper and you scratch the surface, every woman don't respond the same to, to the same thing that come out of your mouth. You have to learn how to connect with that woman's emotions or, or speak to that woman in a way that she best understands it. You don't, I'm not going to say you have to do it, but it's if, if you want to be, looked at as that dude who get it. And when she see you, she damn near see God. If you want to be looked at as that, then you need to be able to do that. You understand? Communication is key. It, it, nothing happens without communication. You is not getting from no point A to point Z nowhere without saying, Hey, can you go get me the remote? Hey, um, uh, what we doing tonight? Let's go out to eat. Let's go get us a bite to eat. Come sit down. Let's talk. You know how you feel today. You know, how you feeling today? 
You know, what's on your mind? Talk to me. They, that communication, that's all of that is communication. Communication is basic communication, but it's communication. And you always want to be working on your communication skills. Now, what helps communication skills is emotional intelligence, like I spoke on before. Having emotional intelligence is key. You see what I'm saying? So you want to develop your emotional intelligence skills. Now, <clears throat> I was going to do this as a separate one, but I'm going to group this with communication skills, and we're going to talk about conflict resolution. I could, it, it can be its own entity, but conflict resolution is going to, I'm going to put it up under communication skills because it's a conflict resolution. Again, it can be its own thing, but it's a part of communicating. As a man, you have to be able to bring conflicts to closure because if you leave it up to a woman, your ass will be arguing all fucking night. And trust me, I was a victim of this. Not to say I was victimized and that I just was being manipulated, but I didn't understand. When I was younger in my 20s, when I was with my kid's mom, I, that's something that I just didn't understand, uh, uh, you know, until I got about 26, 27. Like, I started to get older. You see what I'm saying? And and I started to realize that, hey, I'm the leader in all areas, not just you know, I'm because I make money or, you know, do what I say, but in all areas, I'm the leader, and I have to show up as the leader. And so if I'm, I'm, I'm getting in my emotions – when we have a disagreement and shit, if I'm fucking getting in my feelings and I'm doing this shit all night, all night, you know, she going to look at me like, you know, what is this dude doing? Right. So what I learned was that, you know, what I learned was, and, and, and from time to time, a motherfucker can get me, especially, you know, depend on how I feel about him. You know, from time to time, I still may, you know, but for the most part, that's something that I had to like learn was conflict resolution. And I'm saying all that to say, you have to learn how to be able to bring conflict to closure. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and bringing, you know, situations that, that cause uh, confusion, bringing clarity to confusion and, and bringing conflict to closure and not letting it fester all day. Right. Now, they, the, the, the best way to do that is to, to, to have, you know, what I call a code which I'm going to get on that next. That's going to be the next thing. But, you know, so stay tuned to that. But, you know, when you have a code, it's easier for you to, to, to bring conflict to close and bring conflict to, to, to a head. Meaning there's an issue. You let her express yourself. You express yourself. You make sure you guys have an understanding. And that's that. You see what I'm saying? A lot of the times us as men, we get caught up in, we get caught up in, and especially when we, and, and what I identify with, I re, what I realize why men do, why we do this is because we feel like the woman is overpowering us or, or we don't have the submissive woman anymore or, we, we, or, or the woman is giving us pushback or, or, or shutting down and we don't feel like she's respecting us as a man and so we just try harder and get louder and get more whatever, but that ain't going to work. You see what I'm saying? And I realized that that was my problem when I was younger in my early 20s and shit like that, where I would feel like I and then I didn't realize that. But as I got older, I realized that, you know, I'm, I'm in a situation to where she's standing her ground. She not uh, 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 she not trying to hear me out. She's shutting down or she, you know, I don't want to say overpowering, me, but giving me so much pushback to where I got to get louder. I got to get more. You see what I'm saying? I got to get more, you know, hyper masculine and shit like that. But ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. So because she and her feelings, I'm in mine. So what I learned was say what you got to say. I have to say what I got to say. We'll iron out the discrepancies. Respect each other. Watch your motherfucking mouth. You know, and let's see if we can uh, 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 come to terms or if we can agree to disagree and just go on. Right. But you want to learn how to do that and bring closure to conflict and, and, and never sweep things under the rug, right? The thing with sweeping things under the rug, and a lot of women like to sweep shit under the rug, don't let them sweep things under the rug. If a woman don't want to bring things to closer with you, closure with you, then you need to leave that woman alone. What happens is when you sweep things under the rug and things don't, become, things don't get resolved, when you don't know how to resolve your conflict, what happens is resentment starts to build up. Over time, slowly but surely, it's not an overnight thing. 
But eventually, you're not going to be attracted to her no more, and she's not going to be attracted to you anymore. It's going to be like a a type of thing because you got all these built-up problems that never got alleviated because you sweep it under the rug. And a lot of you guys sweep it under the rug with makeup sex. Me, personally, I hate makeup sex. I'm not doing no motherfucking makeup sex because to me, if 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 I have to fuck you for you to listen to me, this I, I ain't trying to do that. And I don't want to send the signal to you to where you get this good passionate sex only when you make me mad or only when you disrespect me or only when you ain't listen to me. This is the only time you get to feel strength for me. I don't want to be in a situation like that. So I don't do makeup sex whatsoever. And if you make me mad and you ain't trying to resolve it, get the fuck out of my face and, and go on somewhere with that shit. So you, you want to make sure you're not sweeping nothing, nothing under the rug. Again, when there's a situation, you control yourself. You let her control herself. You let her say what she got to say. You listen to it. You, you you don't interject. You listen to it. You say what you got to say. She say what she got to say again. You say what you got to say again. Listen to each other. And boom, you know, come to a solution. Now, another thing that that I used to do, another thing that I used to do when, you know, earlier, you know, in my 20s was, you know, because men, we solution based. So we try to hurry up and get to the solution. Right. So when there's a problem, we automatically got a solution for it. When your woman got a problem, we ought to. But a lot of the times it's not that they don't want a solution, but they want to get whatever's on their chest and on their mind off so they can breathe again. And so when you try to rush to a solution, when you try to hurry up and rush to a solution and yes, the, you know, well, let's do it like this. Your woman going to feel unheard. This is where you get, oh, I don't feel like you you hearing me. Or I don't feel like you tr- you hearing me out or I feel like you don't care about me. And you're like, bitch, what you fucking mean? I'm, I, I got the solution right here. But, you know, even if you do have the solution, they got all these emotions and all these feelings sitting on top of them. And, you know, that's the difference between being, you know, empathetic and compassionate. When you're compassionate, you, you know, it's basically solution oriented. But you have to learn how to be empathetic, too, at the same time. And I'm not saying put your feelings to the side or or or. You know, let your issues go unnoticed or whatever, but you do have to like give your woman the space to express, express it, even if you got the solution. And I, I used to run into that when I was younger a lot. So, but I, what I've learned is to, 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 even if I have the solution and this and this and that, we're going to just do, let a motherfucker express themselves. Me sitting there for 30, not 30 minutes, but me sitting there for, you know, three, four, five minutes and let her get that shit off her chest. Let her cry and all that shit. That ain't, I ain't, ain't going to die because she doing that. You know, hey, I understand. You know, I feel you. This is what we're going to do about that then. Boom. Instead of as soon as the problem come out, she hollering, screaming, you ain't try to hit her. You're like, all right, man, fuck it. Let's just, fuck it. Let's just go. Or oh, fuck it, let's just, she complaining about, oh, well, we don't hang out, we don't do this. You like, fuck it, let's just go, shut up, let's just go. Just let her get that shit out. But you got to allow her, not you got to allow her, you got to make sure she's allowing you the same space because you don't want to be sitting with built up shit e- either. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying express yourself, you know, like a like a, ba- a whiny crybaby and shit, but you don't want to be sitting with shit on your chest because that's going to build up resentment and you're going to eventually start to dislike this woman regardless of how fine she is how she treating you you're going to start to dislike her and when you start disliking her you ain't going to be wanting to have sex with her or nothing and that she going to feel that shit so you know conflict resolution man conflict resolution is a skill that that you must you must have that man if you don't have conflict resolution skills you're going to be in a world of shit which, as far as long-term relationships go. And I can get deeper and deeper and deeper into conflict resolution and communication, but it's going to, I'll be here all night. So if you want to know more about that, then uh, wait around for seduction mastery and I got you. But, you know, I'm going to say it again. Conflict resolution is, 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 is fucking key, man. And, and again, that's something that I didn't have when I was in my 20s. I didn't know how to resolve conflict. You see, I thought I thought resolving conflict was saying what I fuck I gotta say and getting getting buck and all this shit, but ain't nobody trying to hear that. You know, when you when you don't have control over yourself. So, you know, and again, when you don't know how to do this and you let your woman, you know, 
stir you into fucking arguments and it's y'all arguing for days and days and days and days and shit. She like, well, God damn, bro. Like, what the fuck is you doing? You know, she's looking at you. You the leader. You bring closure to that shit. All right, say what you got to say. You know, so I'm going to say what I got to say. And that be that. And a lot of the times, too, let me say this before I move on. You don't have to keep screaming and hollering at the woman because she fucking heard you, bro. That's another thing that I had to learn. Like, they fucking hear you. So when you know and when you treat them like you heard me, what I said, you don't have to keep screaming. You say what you got to say, and if they act like they don't want to hear it, then you give them the consequences that come with violating your violating your words or violating you as a person. You got to give them consequences. You don't got to keep saying the same thing over and over and screaming and hollering and all that shit. They fucking heard you. And if they act like they ain't heard you, then you show them. You bring out your code and, and you act on that. Not emotionally, but you remove yourself from the situation. You know, but they fucking heard you, bro. Again, that's one thing. When I was younger, I would get frustrated, like, you like you don't hear me, like, you know, but they heard you. So, you know, say what you got to say and let that be that. But anyway, that's that. Um, now, the next thing, the third thing. So we got inner, solid inner foundation. We got communication skills, which included conflict resolution. And now we got a solid, uh, consistent income. I didn't say make a million dollars a year. <clears throat> I didn't say, you know, make, you know, be you know top two percent of earners but you just need a solid uh consistent income right women are not wired to be pillars for weak men um weak confident weak whatever or weak financially women are not designed to be pillars for a weak man so um women are not designed to hold you up financially you know not for too long at least if a woman have to look at you or not look at you, but if a woman got to hold you up financially, if a woman had to take care of you financially, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you from. Eventually that shit going to play out. Eventually she going to get tired of that shit. And eventually she going to start treating you like the child that she see you as when you uh, become a financial burden on a woman, you eventually typically, you know, typically you, she start to look at you like a child and she's, typically going to start treating you like that. I don't care who you is unless you the pimping, right? And y'all ain't the pimping. So uh, don't think you pimping a woman by, you know, getting, you know, having her take care of you while she doing her little, you know, uh, CNA job or, you know, her little insurance claims, whatever, and you just living off of her checks. You think you pimping and you think you're doing something. You're not, bro. Eventually she's going to start losing respect for you eventually it may not be overnight eventually especially especially if you not if you don't have a situation to where like y'all in a union and you know while she at work you being a house husband and you fucking cleaning up and cooking and changing diapers and and all that type of shit and even then most women won't even respect that after a while you see what i'm saying so make sure you have a solid income you know, and not not to take care of a woman, you know, not to, you know, because a lot of you guys today, y'all like to do the 50-50 thing. You like to do the, the, the you know, splitting bills and all that shit, which is fine. So I'm not saying get money to to take care of a woman. What I'm saying is get one, get money so a woman don't have to take care of you. And you could depend on your own arms. When something happened, a lot of y'all guys be in situations, you be living with chicks, and then when y'all break up and shit, you don't got nowhere to go. You know, the crib in her name because you ain't got your shit together. Y'all be hitting me up like, what you should you do? You don't want to be homeless and all this shit. You're not supposed to even be in that situation because before because before you get into a relationship, before you get into a situation, you're supposed to be solid already financially. I'm not saying rich, but at least solid, you know, in, in case something do happen. And again, a, a woman don't want to take care of you, bro. I don't care who they is. I don't care who they is exceptions don't make the rules. Yeah, you may see a couple couples where it works and the woman is the breadwinner and the dude staying at home and everything works and they all in love. That's the exception. Most women ain't like that. The overwhelming majority of women ain't like that, so don't strive for that. Be able to take care of yourself, right? Women are not designed to be pillars for weak men, right? Women are not wired to take care of men financially. Not only are they not wired 
to 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 take care of men financially society right <clears throat> society reinforces it like they're so socially engineered to look down upon you if you ain't getting no money so not only is it hardwired within them societal reinforcements further uh uh reinforce that within them you understand what i'm saying so Make sure you're getting you some money before you get into a relationship. And this is not to trick on again. This ain't to trick on a woman and give a woman all your. It's ain't for that. It's so you can be straight. And uh, and, and having a, 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 a income is one of the main pillars of confidence, right? For anybody who didn't take my confidence course, there are four pillars to confidence. You got your resources as a man, your your, your income, your resources, the what you like. I mean, what you look like when you look in the mirror. Do you like yourself? Do you have a passion or a purpose in life and your ability to, to, to be successful with women? The more of those pillars that you have, the stronger those pillars, the, the more confident you'll be as a man. So what I'm saying is having an income and having resources for yourself as a man contributes to confidence. It's one of the main pillars of confidence. You understand what I'm saying? So always remember that. Now, I want you guys to remember this, too. Love will start to wear off when you're in a situation with, 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 with a girl, especially you young guys be trying to get into relationships and you don't got your shit together. Love going to start wearing off when survival start kicking in. So when them lights start getting cut off or when the baby ain't got no motherfucking pampers or, 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 or formula or whatever, right, and you got to hustle and bustle and you're worried and this and this and that, love going to start wearing off. And I'm not talking about the love. I love you, so if you get sick, I'm going to cry. Or if you get sick, I'm going to feel bad. But I'm talking about the love, the the in love, the admiration. The, I'm going to be submissive to you. That type of shit starts to wear off when a woman's like survival start having to survive. Like survival kicks in. Love wear off when survival kicks in. And the more a woman is in survival mode, the more she's going to start to look at you funny. Right? The more she's going to start to side eye you. Why am I doing this? Why am I struggling? Why am I in this type of situation? Right. I can do better than this. I can do bad by myself, especially if you arguing and all that type of shit and you ain't got your emotions in check. And you ain't got your conflict resolution skills and you ain't got the communication and you broke and y'all arguing and shit. Especially then she's going to start thinking to herself like, why am I doing this? I can do better. I can do bad by my goddamn self. Right. Especially if she have representations of other men that's on top of her game, like the guys at work that seem to be doing good, the guys she see on social media that seem to be doing doing good, her cousin, baby daddy, or her cousin husband who getting it to the bag, right? Who got it figured out? Her, her cousin living the soft life, and her homegirl living the soft life, and the girl at work living the soft life, and the guy at work that's on top of his game that's dressed good and pulling up in his fly shit. She looking at all this shit and then she looking and she comparing you the same way. Like y'all I like, let's be real. We can look and we compare too. we see people on, we see women on the internet and treat, bringing a man to plate every motherfucking day. You like, damn, where am I at? Why I can't get that. Women look at that shit too. We see women on the internet praising a man and you know, I suck my man dick every day. You know, that's what they be saying. <laughs> Right. You, you see women saying shit like that. I, you know, I give my man head every day. Got got wake him up with got got three thousand and hit king and all this shit. Y'all be looking at that shit like, damn, why I can't have that. Women compare the same way you be comparing. Why my girl ain't got a fat ass like that? Why my girl don't talk to me like that? What I got to do to get that? You see what I'm saying? When I be posting my little receipts and shit, y'all be like, well, shit, why I ain't got that? Why my girl don't do this? So the same way you be comparing Based on what you see in the world, your woman be comparing to. Whether good, bad, right, or wrong. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but they do it. So when they see them fly-ass dudes at work or when she go out with her homegirls, as she go on that girl's trip and she see the dude, the young guy pull up and he fly and shit, talking that good shit, and your ass sitting at home struggling, playing a motherfucking video game while the light's about to get cut off. You see what I'm saying? You want to make sure when your woman look at you, she see that guy. This is that guy. He get into his bag. I know I'm not saying you need a whole lot of money for a woman to feel like that, but make sure you got your ducats in a row before you try to get into a relationship, brother. You got to make sure you got you had that, right? Financial security is a huge factor on if a woman feels safe and secure or not. Again, a 
woman cannot f- feel, especially a woman who, 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 let's say a woman come from a decent home or a woman come from, she don't come from poverty or she don't come from the projects and shit, right? If you got a woman that come from that and then she come into a situation to where she's struggling, that's going to take a whole toll. You see what I'm saying? Financial security is a huge factor on if a woman feels safe and secure, right? It's hard to have a you know feminine, submissive woman when you're struggling and she in survival mode. I'm not saying you can't do it, but I'm saying it's hard. It's hard when the baby ain't got no food or the light spot to get turned off tomorrow. That woman ain't think about sucking your dick all night from the back and, you know, rubbing your back all night in candles. You can't even afford that. You see what I'm saying? Financial security. I know, you know, we talk about gold diggers and shit. Gold diggers is one thing, but it's it's okay for a woman to want to be sh- comfortable financially. That's I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. I want to be comfortable financially. And it's very hard. E- let's just think, even as you already know as a man how hard it is to function when you broke. I'd have been up. I'd have been broke. It's hard to function. I'm. It's hard to love when I'm broke. It's hard to love a woman. It's hard to. It's just hard to when you broke. It's hard. I'm not the same person. I'm the same person, but the way I am in a relationship is different when I'm broke. Because when I'm broke, I'm on survival mode. I'm on go mode. I'm on hustle mode. I don't want no. I don't hear no bullshit. I ain't got time to be laying up all day. Right now, I could afford to. My girl complaining. Let's see my girl complaining. She want to just fucking lay up all day. Right now, I can afford to do that. I can afford to do that. But when you fucking the light's about to get cut off tomorrow, you like, bitch, you need to shut up. You know, you're more on edge. You're more antsy. You're more anxious. You're more depressed and shit. And if it do that to you, you don't think it do it to them? It's hard to be soft girls, submissive and sweet and all that shit when you're struggling. It's just hard. So always remember that you need money when you're in a relationship. You need that shit. Now, the fourth thing, right? The, the, the fourth thing that you need in a relationship, I meant before you get into a relationship, is you need a code. You need your code as a man. And your code consists of your limits. Your code consists of your standards. And your code consists of your boundaries. Now, your standards are the quality, right? The quality of living. Your standards are, you know, I don't want you to get fat or we need to have a certain amount of money saved or, you know, I like the food cooked this way. Let's eat out this way. This is what, this is how we live it. This is how we going to live. These are your standards. You need to know what your standards are, right? I don't want a woman who's going to be fat. I don't want a woman who's going to be cursing me out every day. I want to be happy. I want to be peaceful. I want to travel every six months. You know, I want to make sure we represent ourselves when we out and about, right? You need to have standards, you know, a standard of living when you're in a relationship and you got to make sure your woman is following that standard of living or, you know, if she got a standard of living and you got a standard of living, y'all can come together as one and y'all both have a standard of living that you can adhere to. Standards are very, very important. You need to stand your standards, right? That's your standards. Then you got limits. What you will and what you will not do. I'm not letting you peg me. (laughs) Your girl say, I'm not having no threesomes. I ain't smoking no crack. I'm not spending over a certain amount of money. I'm not spending a certain amount of money on a wedding. I'm not going here. I'm not getting on no planes, you know, every fucking six months. These are your limits. These are what, how far you willing to go. Right. I'm not. I'm not allowing you to 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 have other dudes. You know, you got to have limits. You got to have a threshold. And not just like infidelity wise, but, you know, I'm not sitting and watching TV all day. I can only watch TV for an hour a day with you. You know, I can't spend all my money on this trip. You see what I'm saying? You got to have limits. This is a part of your code. Now. The most important part, and it's not even the most important part, but you know, I like talking about boundaries. Your boundaries are what you will and what you will not tolerate. You understand? These are your boundaries. This is what, you know, hey, watch your mouth when you talk to me. No guy friends. You cheat, we done. Respect me. These are your boundaries. You as a man, 
must have a code that consists of limits, standards, and boundaries. And you need to know this because if you don't know yourself, if you don't know what you will allow, you don't know where you're going. This is, this is what makes you look like an emotional wreck. Uh, you always got problems. You don't know what you're talking about. You fucking all over the place. You responding to every little fucking thing. You, you running around like in a relationship, like a chicken with your head cut off because you don't really have a guide or a template to your life. You see what I'm saying? So, you need that, especially the boundaries. If you don't have nothing else, if you don't have standards, if you don't have limits, you need boundaries. Because if you don't got no boundaries, a woman is not going to respect you. And actually, women feel safer as a man when you have boundaries. Women feel safe and secure as a man when you have boundaries. Any man that don't have boundaries for himself and for his relationship, women don't like to feel like they can run all over you. Women don't like to feel that they can run wild and that you don't, you know, you just let anything happen. You'll let anything happen to you. You'll let anything happen to the relationship. You'll let anything happen to her. You don't care. It seems like you don't care. You know, you, you're too weak to care. Women don't like that type of shit. Women respect boundaries. I don't give a fuck what they saying on these internet streets about, oh, uh, he ain't my man or you ain't married me. These, these are the women saying this that be fucking with sucker ass dudes who they don't respect. But any woman that get with a dude they respect, they're going to respect them boundaries. I don't care who they is. You see women say that. I mean, you look in my comments all the time. When I be talking about boundaries, you, it's always multiple women saying, man, you know, I, I met my husband. You know, every other guy that I dealt with was like this, was on some sucker shit. But when I met my husband, you hear him say husband. When I met my husband, he was the first guy that had boundaries and he enforced them. And that made me a better person. And I appreciate him for that. You know, and I love him for that. So, Boundaries is big. You need boundaries. If you ain't got no boundaries, you don't have nothing. And you're gonna get you're gonna forever be getting ran over. You're gonna forever be getting disrespected. Your woman ain't gonna respect you. And if a woman don't respect you, she can't love you. If a woman don't respect you, she can't be submissive to you. She can't serve you. She can't uh uh obey you and all that shit. You understand? Boundaries, boundaries, and not just boundaries. In your relationship, your woman need to see that you got boundaries with your friends, your colleagues, or nothing. You can't, don't let, your woman ain't, don't, don't let your woman see your friends punking you and your job punking you and people punking you and shit. Because if everybody else could punk you, she gonna feel like she could punk you. You see what I'm saying? Unfortunately, that's the way that women look at shit. So, if you a bitch to everybody else, then you gonna be a bitch to her. You see, then when you try to check her, she's going to be like, why didn't you say that to your homeboy? Your homeboy be talking crazy to you. You don't say nothing to him. But you're going to buck up at me for because I'm a woman. You know, you're going to get that type of treatment. So make sure you're a guy that ain't to be played with all the way around across the board, whether it's your employees, your employer, your homies, your, 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 your kids, your baby mamas, your mama, your daddy. Ain't nobody supposed to be playing with you. You know, everybody's supposed to respect you and respect your boundaries. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that's number four, your code. And again, your codes is your limits, your standards, and your boundaries. Now, the next thing that you need, so we'll be on one, two, three, four. That's the fourth thing. So we had solid inner foundation. We had communication skills and conflict resolution skills. That's That was the two. Then we had um, uh, a consistent solid income. That's three. And then not, you don't have to make a million dollars a year or $400,000 a year. Just make sure your shit is consistent and you solid, right? And you can take care of yourself, right? Or a family if you're trying to get a family. Um, so we got uh, solid income. Then we got uh, your code, which is your limits, standards, and boundaries. And next we have you need at least an intermediate level of game. And when I say game, this is your knowledge, and your strategy when it comes to women. Now, you need game in life. You don't want to be a game goofy duck that's out here, no, you know, not street smart. You don't know what's going on in the world, but I'm talking about dealing with women. You need at least an immediate level of game, information, knowledge, and the, and the, the, the balls to apply the knowledge and the strategy to apply the knowledge effectively to get what you want. You need at least an immediate level of that game, right? Um, before you get into a relationship, relationships are not for guys who don't know what the fuck they're doing with women. And so I'm not saying you have to run through the whole motherfucking town and you got to have a hundred bodies or 50 bodies, but you at least need to know what women find attractive. You at least need to know how to communicate effectively to get sex from women 
and you at least need to know how to at least get basic level cooperation and compliance or submission or whatever that is you need at least need to be able to get that you don't have to be super advanced level like myself and have all these seduction skills you don't have to have all that but at least know how to get laid and get what you need or want from a woman while you know keeping her happy that's the intermediate level if you don't know how to do that i'm not saying that you won't last in a relationship but your relationship is going to be very very hard and remember these things are to this relationship checklist are things that you need in order to keep your relationship healthy and sustainable. So you don't have to have a game. You can be a virgin and get into a, get into a relationship, but you're going to be, it's going to be very hard if you don't know how to deal with women, if you don't know how to resolve conflict, if you don't know how to keep women interested, if you don't know how to, to, to get sex from your woman, because the same way you got to learn, you know, get sex from different women on dating apps and shit like that and keep yourself attractive and bust little moves and have little conversations. Y'all be thinking that when you get into a long-term relationship, especially when you get married, that the pussy is just automatic. And when you come home, it's going to be like, hey, you're my husband. So here I owe you this pussy. Come take it. It don't work like that. The same way when you single and, you know, you chit chatting and you having conversations and you attentive and, you know, she googly eyed and shit. You got to be like that in your relationship. You can't get in a relationship and just, okay, fuck it. I'm married now. Just, okay. Nah, you got to keep that shit up. So it's best to, to for, for this type of shit to be in your blood. It's best to live like that. That's why I always say, that's why I always say, man, when you're dealing with women, especially with women that you like, you want to be as authentic as possible. Because if you fuck around and get with that woman, you're going to have to keep that up. So you want to be your authentic self when you're in a relationship. But, um... You need to to be able to, you know, uh, c communicate, you know, to get women and get, s get sex from them and, you know, get compliance. You know, that's the intermediate level. The beginning, le the beginner level is to get a woman's attention. Right. And then you take it up, step it up and not just getting sex from a woman. That's beginner level. But when you can start to get compliance from a woman, meaning a woman will put her own needs to the side or put her own agenda to the side and join your program and comply with you or be submissive to you. You know, when you get to that level, that's more intermediate. So what you're doing is giving a woman something to give it, giving a woman enough hope or happiness for her to let herself go to follow your lead. You at least need that if you want to, start to have a, a, a sustainable relationship or at least a happy one. You at least need the ability to, to for a woman to say, okay, I'm going to follow you. Now, where you lead her to, who knows, but you at least need that. So, and again, when, you, when you're in a relationship, a long-term relationship, I've been in a long-term relationship um, very long. So it, it's not this thing to where it's just like, okay, we together and you owe me some sex. No, she got to be attracted to you just like you You got to be attracted to her. She got to be attracted to you and you have to keep that up. I'm not saying you got to play games and be something you're not the whole time, but you have to be attractive. You have to communicate. You have to, for her to look at you and see you and be like, oh, I'm a, I want to sleep with him tonight. Oh, I can't wait till he get home so he can bust this down. Like You, you have to move a certain type of way for a woman to to to, to see you like that. So you at least need that before you get into a relationship. And that's intermediate level game. Now, <clears throat> the next thing you need before you get into a relationship. So let's go over the list again, right? A solid inner foundation, communication skills, slash conflict resolution skills, a solid income, uh, your code, which is your limits, standards, and boundaries, uh, intermediate level game, and the next, you need a program. You need a program. Your program is how you operate and where you're going in this life. You need to know that. Now, you can get away with not having this one. But I say you need it because it makes you that more respected. Women, Your woman will respect you more when you got a destination, when you know where you want your, your life to go and when you know where you want your relationship to be. Why you think women ask you, will you see yourself in five years? What, what you going to be doing in 10 years? Why you think, because when, when you sit around, you're like, well, I'm just, you right now, I'm just, you know, just hoping for the 
know, I'm just building this. No, but when you can say, okay, in 10 years, this is why I want to be at X, Y, Z, da, da, da. To her, you got a program. You know where you're going. And women want to be a part of that type of shit because they don't be knowing where they're going, but they know they got They want to go somewhere. A lot of women don't know where they're going, but they want to go somewhere with a man they love. And so when they could talk to you and they could see that you know where you're going, they'd be like, oh, this guy, this potential, you know, because he's going somewhere and I want to go with him. Women don't be knowing where the fuck they be going. When you ask a woman where you see yourself in five years, it's always some abstract, vague shit, you know, that don't really mean nothing. But I'm telling you, they where they want to go in 10 years is with a man, wherever the man uh, that they love is going. That's where women want to go in 10 years. That's where they want to go. Wherever the man I love, wherever he going to be at, wherever he going, that's I'm going to be right behind him. So it's always good to know where you're going, and that's your program, and have a good idea of how you're going to get there. That makes you much more respected as a man. So this one is not something you, you like super need right away, but it's good if you have it. You know, and you working every day to get there. Do you know how like it good to make a woman feel? It make you feel good too. Like when you when you working for something, make you feel good to get up every day and, and go after your shit. But it's extremely sexy to a woman to watch you do that. When she with you and she watch you get every get up every day to make sure that you get to your destination. And then when you get to that destination, you got another one. You know, and even if you're a guy that's content and you don't want, you know, you don't got to be super ambitious and all that shit. You can be content and happy, but at least know that that's where you want to be. Right. If you're in a situation to where. You know, you're young, especially when you're younger, at least know that that's where you want to get to a place where you're content and you're happy and you settle. At least that if you don't got super crazy ambitions. Right. So. Again, you want to know where you're going in life. You want to know how you're going to get there. You see what I'm saying? You want to know what you need to get there. This is your program. Dude say, oh, man, she won't get on my program. What's your program? You ain't got no fucking program. You ain't got no code. Your, your code go into your program, too. But you ain't got no motherfucking program. Where you going? What you doing with yourself? Where you going? How you going to get there? What are the rules of engagement so that you can get to this destination, you know, as easy as possible with the less friction and, and, and less loss and less headache. And, 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 and you can get, you know, there with maximum of uh, maximum efficiency. You know, what's the protocol of this uh, 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 of, of how to get there? What is going to slow you up? What is going to weigh you down? All of this called your, it's called your program, and you need that. She won't get on my program. You ain't got no fucking program. You understand what I'm saying? Get get you a program, man. When you got you a program, man, women, I'm telling you, man, women, this is grown man shit. This is real man shit. See, y'all, y'all be on that. Y'all be on that. I'm trying to play busy and act fucking busy, and I ain't going to text back fast. Y'all be on that suck, sucker ch- rookie level shit. This grown man game over here. This real man business over here. Y'all need to get on that if you want to be respected like that. You understand? So that's that. Now we got what we got. We got solid in the foundation, communication slash conflict resolution skills, solid income, your code, which is your limits, standards, and boundaries, uh, intermediate level game, a program. Now, lastly, you need strength. You need strength. That's a need. That's a necessity. You need strength. If you don't have strength in a relationship, you are going to be a duck, a sitting duck that's getting plucked. Listen, women are not designed to be pillars for weak men. Women are not designed to be pillars for weak men. You need strength. You need mental strength. You need emotional strength, right? When things get hard, you have to have the strength to keep going. You have to have the strength to lead. You have to have the strength to overcome the hurdles and the obstacles and keep going. When it get raining, you have to have the strength to hold up the umbrella and keep fucking walking. You have to have strength. Women respect strength. Not only do you have to have that type of strength, you have to have the strength to enforce your boundaries and the strength to walk away if need be. And if you don't have that, you will forever be at the heels of a woman. You will forever be a woman's toy. 
if you don't have the strength to enforce your boundaries and the strength to walk away from her ass, if need be, you will forever be a woman's play toy. She's going to play with you and use and abuse you. I don't care where she's from on the planet. So if you think you're finna go get you a passport and go to the Philippines or go to fucking Japan or go to the Dominican Republic or wherever you think you're finna go and you and you weak, I don't care where she's from on the planet. If you weak, a woman is going to take advantage of you. I don't care where what's her background. I don't care how she was raised. If you're weak, you are not going to make it with women at all. So you need to have the strength to enforce your boundaries and you need to have the strength to walk the fuck away if you need be. And again, you need to have strength to invo- uh, uh, um, you know, endure hardships, uh, life's valleys, because life's peaks and valleys. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. You got to have the strength to get back up when you fall off your horse. You got to have the strength to hold up the umbrella and keep moving. You understand what I'm saying? As a man, you need strength, emotional strength, game muscles, and that's a concept. You know, game muscles is uh, it's a concept that I came up with, right? Um, What's well, a term that I came up with that is basically your ability to do hard things when it comes to relationships. You have to have game muscles. So when your woman curses you out and she calls you a bitch, it's hard to say, you know what? I ain't fucking with you. That's hard, but when you when you when you when you got strong game muscles, when you got strength in the game, you got game muscles, you'll be able to do that more easily. Right? It's just like regular muscles. So again, you gotta have emotional fortitude, you gotta have mental toughness, um, and you have to have game muscles. You know, this all this is your strength. But strength is essential when you want to get into a relationship, right? And you want your relationship to be healthy and sustainable. So let's go over all those seven again. We got solid inner foundation, right? Which your solid inner foundation consists of confidence, emotional control, emotional in, uh, intelligence, and mental stability. Then next we have communication skills tied in with conflict res- resolution. Next we have a solid income. After that, we have your code, which is your limits, standards, and your boundaries. After that, you have uh, a program. You need a program. Then you need intermediate level game. Well, I said intermediate level game first. Then you got to have a program. Then you need strength. But anyway, guys, that's been that. Um, that's been my time. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. That way you can get this good player ish fresh off the press. Y'all know my slogan, playerism is the antidote to feminism. That's if you're watching on YouTube. Um, if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or Apple or Spotify, leave me a review. Or, and give me a five star rating that helps the podcast grow. Um, uh, anyways, guys, join the Players Club. That's my private, exclusive men's community at the Players Club. VIP. The Players Club. VIP. Go to the Players Club. VIP or click the link in the description, the bio, wherever you see this at. And if you listening to this early enough, right? If you listening to this early enough, make sure you register for my free training: Three Secrets to Make a Woman Fall in Love with You. These three secrets, when you implement them you'll get positive results in your relationships immediately. So sign up at how to make a woman fall in love with you.com or click the link in the description, bio chat, wherever you see this at. But anyway, guys, that's been that I'm your gracious, gracious, gracious game advisor. Yours truly King Dre. I'm gone.